Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Wrestling Paradox Podcast. Oh, it is great to be back another week with the Sensational Six, and we have the hottest woman on the indies tonight. But before we get into all that, uh, make sure we got to get this out of the way. M&J Ecological, 305-697-2258. Um, that is our main sponsor. If you guys got any uh, reptile issues, please reach out to them. They can take care of all that. CCW, the number one training school in South Florida, Pompano. Uh, last 18 years, they produced some of the biggest wrestlers coming out of Florida. And our star of the evening came out of that way. But hello, Chris, how are you? Going How along, yeah. I mean, we had, we had a big debut tonight with Jake St. Patrick on Dart. Huge debut, hey, huge debut. Um, but uh, our star tonight uh, went a little higher than that, man. She was on uh, she was on Raw Underground. She, she was. She was, yes, sir. Repping the pink and black. Uh, I, I, the best performer to ever wear pink and black in my eyes. We'll get into that later. Uh, <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, our main event, our guest of the evening, the Detroit Barbie herself. She is, uh, she has a shirt that says it, that bitch, Marina Tucker. What is up, Marina? What's up? Uh, my nails are still broken from the last CCW show. That's what's up. Do you know what it's like? To walk around looking like this, but knowing that this looks like complete trash, it's embarrassing. Okay, <laughs> you know how hard it is to get back into my nail salon? Weeks to take appointments. I have to be barricading myself in my house to avoid looking like this in public. So that is what's up. Oh, all right. Um, I am so I can sorry. Feel your pain. I can feel your pain. Trust me. I, it's hard work looking like this too. Well, I mean, we're oh. just going to jump right into it. I, 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 Chris, that's just a different story, different topic. We're going <laughs> to jump right into it. And uh, that is Homecoming. Um, for spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, Marina was the only person not pinned in this match. And she didn't walk out the champion. So oh. I, what is going on, Marina? Like, everybody wants to know what's up with the titles. What's going on? Like, tell us. I, we are all lost on it. Well, thank God someone at least had a pair of eyes to see what was happening because considering there was two referees in that ring and no one could see that I was truly the winner uh, is a complete joke, okay? You're right. I did not get pinned. I freaking took La Brava, stacked her on top of Miss Roma Luchadora and got the one, two, three. And yet That's what I saw. everyone was super confused. It's a freaking joke. And like I said, Months ago, the CCW screw job is keep, 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 keep putting me down. And guess what? I'm still coming out on top no matter what happens. See, that, that leads into our next question. I have a big question for you. Like, what is the issues that the refs have with you in CCW? It always seems like they have it out for you every match. We saw that breaking chains um, and we saw their homecoming. Uh, who doesn't have it out for me? I mean, I'd have it out for me if I wasn't me either. But at the end of the day, I'm going to get my title back. And by the way, if anyone else didn't even notice, they're raising a fake champion's hand. Where was my belt at the last show? When Miss Romo came out, anyone else notice? I mean, after my amazing victory over two women, I even called everybody out to say, hey, where's my belt? belt she didn't even come out with the real ccw champion <laughs> because she's a fraud through and freaking through so whoever has it out for me whether it's management whether it's the refs well i'm just going to consider it all of the freaking above and i'm going to come out on top like i always do no matter what so everyone in the entire state of florida can have it out for me i just feel bad for them i think what marina's trying to say is uh roma's a big fat phony Exactly. <laughs> Big fat phony. <laughs> well, you, you talk about Florida, and that's something I want to touch on. Like, where in Florida have you been? What titles have you held? Like, obviously, like, you are the hottest woman right now in the Indies in Florida, it feels like. But give us the rundown. Like, Marina Tucker, what's the resume? Well, if we're just talking Florida in particular, literally from Panhandle down to Miami, I've been through it and I've ran through it all. Uh, belt holding wise, uh, I claim to be, you know, my home is definitely CCW. I have literally clutched the women's division and strung it up on a pedestal about here, considering before I joined it, it was 
oh, way down there with some women that I would like uh, barely consider to call women's wrestlers. <laughs> and I literally had to work my beautiful behind off to get it to where it is now. And I am glad to say that I am still the women's champion, whether or not some imposter has my belt or not. But then in the North Florida region, I called WXW the Wild Samoans, my home as well. Not only have I been cheated out of my title there as well, but for the past entire year, COVID or not, I have not only been the women's champion for over a year, I single-handedly brought back the women's tag titles as well and held both at the same time. That's quite a resume. That is, that is a very nice resume. What about so, outside of Florida? Yeah, outside, outside of Florida. Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Outside, everywhere, whether it's Atlanta, Alabama, Nashville, I will hopefully be making some brand new areas to my list this year. You'll just have to keep an eye out for that. But don't worry, there are a lot of new states uh, to be announced coming in 2021. And I can't wait to grace those states with my uh, presence. It is the essence folks. of glory. Essence of glory. I, I thought Johnny Walker was magnificent, but I have been uh, pushed back in my seats. Oh, please. <laughs> Don't listen to some redneck talk about his glory days. <laughs> Just remember, you said it, not me. <laughs> He's already got heat with me. So, uh, Who is on your immediate list and that you're going after? <laughs> Besides Romo. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, she's just <laughs> in my direct path. We can say that. But my immediate list, I would have to say, is any woman not in the Southeast that I haven't been able to get my uh, claws on, if you will. These uh, women here in the Southeast, I've been there. I've done that. I'm moving on to greener pastures. That is my goal for 2021 is to keep moving on up, uh, getting in the ring with women who I, you know, might not know the most about, might not know their resume but uh, I'm always bringing a fight to anybody. And guess what? Don't let the blonde hair fool you. I'll whip anybody in anybody's ass. Well, that, that's case in point. Uh, February 20th, you got a big match with, in Nashville. Um, enter the machine. Yes, uh, Miss Chrissy. And in fact, I saw that her uh, promo aired tonight on uh, Alive. And she was so kind to give us a geography lesson of where she's at. But I, I hope in Nashville that she is super prepared to be able to relocate where her head is when I knock it off in February. Coming in hot. Hey, hey, can I ask a question? Did, did you see the, the commercial before hers? I was too to in a trance with uh, what was coming up next. It was ours. It was ours. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Oh, well, sorry. You're still nicer than Johnny Walker. Um, <laughs> so you, you said you'd whip anybody's ass. And I have to ask you, what are your thoughts on intergender matches? Oh, <laughs> thanks for actually asking that because. Well, can I, can, can, be honest, can I ask, can I tell you why I asked that question? Sure. Because I had a, a, a guest email or email us in earlier and he asked us um, what in the, this was how the question was worded. It said, what does Marina Tucker have to do to become the face of CCW, seeing how Will Austin is already the face of CCW? And I was like, wow, I feel like Marina <laughs> kick Will's ass. So I wanted to know what your thoughts are on intergender matches and if you would have a match with Will Austin. You can already tell who the question was, was from, by the way. Well, first of all, he's the face. Uh, I'm sorry, isn't he still I, in like ninth grade? I'm sorry, I thought you have to be like a certain age limit to be a face of a professional company. But uh, yes, I would have a match with Mr. High Flyer himself. And unlike most gentlemen in the independent scene these days, I'd probably catch him on almost every dive he actually does, unlike most men in the indie wrestling scene. But Speaking of intergender wrestling, yes, I do have very strong opinions about it. Uh, a couple months ago, you know, when quarantine and everybody had nothing to do except, you know, complain on Twitter, I saw that the intergender wrestling, like, you know, hashtag was like spreading like wildfire. And I was just reading all these comments and dying laughing because all women are intergender wrestling needs to be this. Intergender wrestling needs to be more prevalent, this, that, and the other. But at the end of the day, it makes me laugh because 
I am five foot three. I've been an athlete my entire life. No one is going to be calling me a small woman, but a lot of the times in the ring, I uh, encounter women who are not real athletes, are not strong, uh, definitely can't lift me, definitely think that I'm the bigger woman in the ring, and uh, they do not feel comfortable doing certain things with me, or, you know, whether it's uh, simple moves, lucha moves, you name it, they they just aren't strong enough to pull off certain moves. So yes, I do understand that there's a lot of women who are for intergender wrestling, but therefore those men to make them look good because if they can't even base me, really please tell me what 205 Live guy you're basing for because then I would love to watch that match. So if you can't pull off stuff with me and believe me, I was a cheerleader for seven years. I've only based women. I've based women who are 10 times bigger than me and you know the size of my pinky. I will do anything, catch anybody, throw anybody, do anything. But I'd love to also see these women who are super for it basing for all those men as well, because I would be doing it. But I know for a fact on the other side, none of those girls will because they won't even do it with other women. Yeah. Shit. You've seen it. Yeah, and it's thing. called, it's just called actually being an athlete. Okay. Yeah, that's all that I got to say. I love that answer. Yeah. And I talk with other women um, that are actually real athletes that are now professional wrestlers, and uh, they feel the exact same way, whether it's they came from the bodybuilding world, they came from the Muay Thai world, the jiu-jitsu world, also professional like cheerleaders and stuff like that. People who've actually had to lift, actually, you know, be strong their entire life. They think it's kind of hilarious, too. Yeah, it's muscle memory. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um. So right now in the wrestling industry, indies, professional, you know, like AEW or Raw or anything like that, who would Marina Tucker have a five-star match with? Oh, you be it could be no, it could be male or female. Yeah. Mm. Well, I'm speaking it into existence because that's the plan to actually have it happen one day. Miss Charlotte Flair, yeah. love to go in it with the queen, the queen and the bitch. Let's I go. I don't know. I've actually thought about that before. Like, cause I, I was like, whenever we have guests coming on, I'm like, who can I see them having a good match with? And Charlotte was one of them. Uh, I think that you, you and Becky Lynch would be, would be fun to go at. So there's, there's definitely. I'll, I'll even throw in another one. Um, I think heel versus heel matches can be done. It just takes a very high level of psychology to pull it off. Uh, heel Trish Stratus was one of my favorite inspirations and definitely a stone cold bitch and I love her. <laughs> so I'd like to have a bitch versus bitch match oh, and yeah. uh, may the better one win. And that would definitely be something of a fantasy dream match of mine. Of, of course, Charlotte and someone like Charlotte and Trish Stratus or, you know, somebody you would love to have those matches with, but like if somebody that you have access to in the Indies right now, where you could be like, that's the person that like I have respect for. I know we can go in there and just kill it any night of the week, mm -hmm. Monday through Sunday. Doesn't matter. Who's that person in Indies for you? Or somebody that you look forward to having a match with? Uh, it's going to be Miss Genocide. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can. Yes, Miss uh, Terminator herself. Yes. For sure. I can see you having a match with two people. Um, Jordy and Grace. Mm hmm um, or even Penelope Ford. We, you we've know, seen have, Penelope Ford uh, alive. I've been told that uh, we're a little similar, so I can yes. see that very happening. Yeah, it would match well together, especially with Pen Penelope Ford, heel versus heel um, would be great. But Jordan Grace can have a good match with anybody, male or female. Oh, it, what, so that's what happens when you're a very strong athlete. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And she has a great husband as a teacher uh, for wrestling. So Jonathan Gresham go. is... And, that, and that's a very big key factor, especially, you know, in the independent scene, training and consistency is key. I'm a person that I've, I'm reaching about my five-year mark in professional wrestling, and I can say for a fact, I've never stopped training. It's a big key. You always have to develop. You always have to evolve. You have to change. You have to get better. And there's so many people that just get satisfied of doing something for a few months and saying, oh, I'm fine. And you're just going to remain average. And my biggest fear is being average. So... That's Joe's biggest fear too. Every every day, 
Thanks. One per, one percent better. Just one percent better. better every day. I, that's why. That's why I'm saying. If I'm one percent better every day, hold door for somebody. Something like that makes you better every every day you go. Oh, holding the doors. Your your goal for the day. We have very different goals there, I see, sir. No. But thank oh. you for at least still holding doors for us, ladies. We I guess yeah. we appreciate okay. that. It's not dead. It's not dead. Uh, <laughs> So, all right. So five years in, this is the impact you made. There is a demand for Marina Tucker out there. Uh, people want Marina Tucker on their shows. People know that Marina Tucker is going to put an ass every 18 inches for her demographic and her group that follows her. Um, that's five years in. What's 10 years in? Mm. Where do we find you in 10 years or five years? That makes you 10 years in the business. Where are you? Somewhere with a signed contract getting paid. That is the goal. And it's forever been the goal since day one, since I was four years old. This is anything. This is it for me. This is what I wanted to do. I went to school to be a sports broadcaster. I've worked in sports. I've been an athlete. I've been in front of the camera, behind the camera. I have done it all. And this is still where I've wanted to be since day one. So the goal is always to be on TV with the contract, making money, uh, accomplishing actually what I've always wanted to do. Very good answer. Awesome. Um, I have to ask you then. All right, so we put Jake St. Patrick in this whole predicament here, and I feel like people aren't going to remember us if we don't ask the tough questions, right? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you. You have in front of you two contracts. Mm. AEW, WWE, same, mm. amount of years, same amount of money, identical. Which one are you picking up? Man, you like to hit the hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I texted you and said I was going to pop some stingers at you. Uh, I think any wrestler would be lying if they said they never dreamed of themselves at WrestleMania. So that that's is, always the goal, and that's always been the goal. That is the mecca. And it's the granddaddy of them all for a reason, and everyone wants to be there. So Once you get in your now foot take, door. Take money, take money out of the equation. Where would you want to go just professionally wise for wrestling? And even you can even throw impact in there, New Japan, anywhere. Just well, well, Japan, Japan's a goal for sure because women over there have to be the best. They have mm -hmm. to be able to protect themselves to be the toughest, the bad bitches around. I mean, I've talked to plenty of women that put on weight before they go to Japan just to be prepared to be bumped around like no one's business and legitimately beat up. So Japan is where heavy hitters you know, come from. And if you want to be a legitimate, serious wrestler and just not be the entertainer is which I like to pride myself on. Uh, Japan is definitely at the top of my list, you know, bucket list to be there. And most of the reason why people want to go to Japan, especially from like America, you get more clout, you have more respect. The fact that you went and respected their culture enough to be into, you know, integrated into their wrestling which is taken 10 times more seriously over there than it is over here and um the respect level that you gain and the knowledge that you come back with you can't pay for that no matter where you go over here you, you're not going to ever be able to get what you get going somewhere else over there all right yeah i like that answer you see the videos of asuka from years ago in japan and she's just getting like the, the shit beat out of her it's just it's ridiculous and, she's, and, I mean, and over there, they've uh, come leaps and bounds. You know, over here, there's the the women's revolution and this and that happened. And they, they made a bet at WrestleMania. And that's great. But no one talks about how hard women have been working in Japan. I mean, they're still just now like the dark matches for Wrestle Kingdom. And right. that's taken years of women being just the best they could possibly be over there. And they're still just dark matches. And I get it. You know, like Ronda Rousey said it, you know, when she was in the UFC, you know, we don't expect to be higher up on the card just because, you know, we're women. You know, you have to have the best storylines. You have to have those matches. You have to earn to be in the semi-main event or the main event. And, you know, I think a lot of Japanese women wrestlers over there deserve 10 times more credit than they get just to be even on a Wrestle Kingdom show, well, whether it's a dark match or not. What I think is um, in the mid '90s, J Japanese women wrestling was huge. I mean, huge. Absolutely. Bull Nakano, you know, Medusa would fly over there, you know, and everything like that. And then in the mid 2000s, early 2000s, it's like women's wrestling in Japan was obsolete. Like there was no nothing. And I think it's picking up steam in the past 10 years that 
you're having like Rio, Asuka, you know, um, Io Shirai, you know, all these these women wrestlers coming from there, defecting over from Japan to further their career. Um, it's it's so new over there in Japan, even though it's been around forever. Right. Yeah. All right, um, Chris, do you have anything else from Rusev? I mean, I mean, I know. All right, so the check that I wrote wasn't that big, so I have to get this wrapped up. So, do you have anything else, Chris? Because I don't want to upset her at all. No, no, I'm good. I, I, I feel great, man. I feel like the answers are out there. CCW, I'm on Team Marina. I'm on Team Marina. Yeah, CCW, uh, you have to ask me questions and uh, <laughs> explain to this woman why she does not have a belt on her arm. Because from what I saw and from what everybody else saw at Homecoming, your shoulders weren't on the mat. So, it, know. you know what? I'm too good to deal with frauds and I'm just going to put everyone back in their place. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> you can't keep the cream from rising to the top. You know, you have to have more going for you to be the best women's professional wrestler than just being from another country. Okay. You have to have something behind it. And that's what I like to say to anybody. You know what? If you talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. You know, God's bless me. I feel sorry about everybody else's luck. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if you want to get in the ring with me, I'll break all 10 of my nails and I'll do my job. I'll go out there and I'll embarrass you and I'll still look good doing it. At the end of the day, you can't keep a real winner down no matter what. You hear that, Will Austin? You hear that, Will Austin? Yeah, yeah, kiddo. Yeah, meet me up here at daycare, okay? We'll have a chat. Recess behind the slide. Yeah, yeah. Will your mom drive you to the show I get to whip your ass at? That'll be cool. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't wear Will Austin's shirt today. Oh, my gosh. We're going to get text messages galore after the show. <laughs> um, so, real quick. On our next block of the sensational six, because this was your this was your block, Marina. You led this. You were as the it should be. The, yes, this was the most important moment for the paradox on having a woman headline. Obviously, not the, the, just a woman, the woman a and woman. the first woman inside. The yes, paradox. yes. Uh, so wow. our next block, there's another woman joining us, and that is referee Amy Veronica. And I feel like you might have a message for her that we can relate to her. So, is there something you want us to pass along? Yeah, go get LASIK. <laughs> <laughs> I you know, it. I can't beat people up and count to three, okay? I can only do so freaking much, okay? You know, I go out there, I do my job, I get paid. Like, do I need to, like, I already have stripes on one of my gears. Do I just need to bring the stripes every CCW match? Because I have them. <laughs> Get, I can do that. I love it. That's the best answer ever. I will relay the message, Marina. Tucker. Thank you so much for stepping inside the paradox tonight. This has been an absolute pleasure. We look forward to having you back on again. And, um, you know, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget the show is brought to you by MJ Ecological 305 697 2258. Hit up Marcus for any of your reptile needs and CCW, the biggest, longest reigning school in South Florida for 18 years. Uh, that Marina Tucker calls it home. And, uh, and uh, this is the face before you leave face. that one. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Not you, Will Austin, with your black eye. Yeah. Ariel Levy. Exactly. Yeah. When, uh, when you make a division, I believe you're the face of the whole company. I just have to exactly. say that. Exactly. And that answers your question, Will. That answers the question. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been an absolute pleasure. Marina Tucker, thank you so much. And uh, Chris, say something stupid. Something stupid. <laughs>